All right, y'all. Today we got an article. We got an article that we're going to do, uh, let's see, uh, four things every wife deserves from her husband. And this is from a guy, Dave Willis, um, at yourtango.com, I believe. Um, so let's go through it. Let's take a look at it, and let's see well, what's the haps on the crafts. Uh, since I'm a guy, I'm clearly not any kind of expert on what women desire or think. So he just disqualified himself with that sentence. Uh, so I asked my wife, oh, okay, your wife, Ashley, and she gave me some very wise insights to share with you. Okay, so this is Ashley's opinion. This is not a cross-section view of women in general. This is his wife's version of this. So that now we've already disqualified him and we've do, reduced this whole uh, article down to just her opinions. Okay. Husbands, let's rise to these challenges and love our wives well. No problem there. Your marriage not only impacts your wife, but your children and future generations. No problem there. Uh, but how you love your wife, you're teaching your sons how to treat women, and you're teaching your daughters what they should expect from men. True indeed. True indeed. Uh, we're going to do, I think I'll do this one next, 25 best pieces of marriage advice happy couples follow. Oh, boy. I'll do that next. Uh, this is not a comprehensive list, but here's what wives deserve from their husbands, according to Miss Ashley. Number one, open, honest, consistent communication. Communication does for marriage what breathing does for your lungs. Be willing to turn off ESPN, oh boy, and put down your iPhone and engage in meaningful conversation. Okay. Uh, never hide anything from her. Ay, ay, ay. Now you're getting out of, <laughs> getting out of pocket. Some things you're going to have to hide to protect her from. Um, build the foundation of trust, honesty, and open communication. I, I agree with that. I agree with that. But some things you ain't going to necessarily have to tell her about. You found a mouse in the backyard or something. You ain't going to have to necessarily tell her about. Because some women, you tell them you found a mouse in the backyard, they're going to want to move. They're going to want you to sell this house and move and buy another house. And if you can't resist her, she's going to make your life a living hell until you get rid of it. So sometimes you got to know your wife. and Some things you can tell her. Now, what I do say is I'm not saying you got to hide things like uh, infidelities. And the best way to not have to deal with infidelity is don't deal with, don't be in, don't get involved with infidelities. But as far as, you know, there's certain things little things around the house, uh, little things like, uh, you know, maybe you had to pay a bill late, uh, you know what I mean? Yeah, you don't have to tell her, oh, I had to pay the water bill late or something like that, you know, and you know it's not going to get cut off. That might not be something you got to run and go tell. That's what I'm saying, you know, because when you start, see, here's the problem with, with telling every little thing. It's like if a woman come and tell you every time a guy hit on her. After a while, it's going to bother you, right? You you, you you can't sell every little thing, but you want to tell the things that are really important, major things, the, the life-changing things. You want to definitely be able to be, be t you want the person to be able to trust that you're going to tell them life-changing events, right? All right. I used to think communication is key until I realized comprehension is, Okay. Uh, you can communicate with someone all you want, but if they don't understand you, it won't reach them the way you need it to. Uh, yeah, you got to be open to listening. You know, we as men, we like to talk a lot, and we don't like to listen that much, but the smartest men listen more than they talk, Right? One of the one of the most powerful men ever walked on this planet, Joseph Stalin. He hardly ever talked in crowds. Definitely didn't talk in the crowds. He just listened to everybody else talk. <laughs> I mean, the guy was powerful. Not saying he was a good guy, because if you ask most Russian people, they'll say 
Yeah, he was not a good guy. But powerful? Ay, ay, ay. Ay, ay, ay. Ay, ay, ay. But I'm saying that to say power doesn't come necessarily from what you say or how you say it. Sometimes you can wield power from not saying a word, just listening, and then responding to what you heard. All right. Every one of your words and every action is either building more trust or eroding her trust in you. Remove distractions and make communication a high priority. I, I agree with that. You know, you should definitely uh, yeah, communicate. You don't want to block anybody out of, uh, you know, uh, communicating with you in a proper way. Number two, physical, emotional, and financial protection. Oh, boy, you should be the one who wipes away your wife's tears, not the one who causes them. Okay, that's true. Uh, our love is too precious for this world. So let me just keep you in my heart safe and sound where no one can judge us and where no one can dispar disparage us. Okay. Maybe this was a quote from his wife. Uh, develop the discipline to work hard inside and outside of the home to make your wife feel like the safest and most secure woman on earth. Agreed. 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 Yes. Uh, have the courage to fight for your family and the faith to recognize that you need a power greater than your own. Agreed. 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 Agreed on that one. Uh, number three, your time, both quality time and quantity time. Time is a currency of relationships. So um, invest. I don't, I don't agree with that. Time is not the currency of relationships. No. No, um, uh, 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 commitment is the currency of relationships. Commitment is the currency of relationships. How committed are you to make this boat float? If, if everybody's not committed, then you don't have anything. Anyway, but they say time is currency. Time is not currency. Time is not the currency. Time is a function of the relationship. Time is a function of the Time is a, um, what, what can I put it? Time is a byproduct, shout out to April Mason, a byproduct of the relationship. It's a byproduct of the, 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 how the relationship is doing. If the relationship is doing well, everybody wants to spend time with everybody. If it's not doing so good, people don't want to spend time with each other. All right, so invest as much time as you can into a marriage. Uh, I would say instead of you should invest as much time as you can, but more than time, you should invest your um, you should invest um, commitment. You should be committed to trying to get the relationship going. You should be committed to trying to do it because you can invest all the time you want in a bad, re you invest time in a bad relationship, what difference does it make? You need to invest time into a relationship that's moving in the direction where everybody's going to win. You're going to win. The woman's going to win. Everybody's going to win. All right. You need to make money, but don't use your career as an excuse to be absent. What are you talking about? Everybody wants to be with a, with a, with a man that is, um, everybody wants to be with a man that is, uh, how can I say it? high value or high earning? I, I I gotta tell you, high earning guys are not getting off uh, at uh, they're not going to work at eight a.m. and getting off at five and having their feet under the dinner tables by five thirty. Those guys are working seventy hours a, a week. Do you really want a high value man? Do you really want a high earning man? Do you? <laughs> Those guys are working a lot. They're gone a lot. They're flying across the country. They're making deals. They're in their home office. They're in their business office. They're working. They got a little bit of time to do everything. They got to eat, have fun, and enjoy their family, and then it's right back to work. Sleep a little bit, and then go right back at it. So you can have that big house and drive that big car. 
and go on those shopping sprees. Somebody got to be out there doing that, right? So I I disagree with this part here. You know, if you're, well, if you're in a relationship. Now, see, this is the thing. If you're in a relationship, you got to constantly remind the woman that you're in a relationship of the situation and how you are able to make these things work. You're able to make it work because you got you to gotta work. You got to be out there grinding. I would say grinding, but you got to be out there creating. You got to be out there creating situations where money will come to you. Okay? So if your woman can't understand that, maybe it's time to have a little talk with her and see what she wants to do. Right? Uh, let's see. When you're home, be present, not distracted or glued to the screen. See, that's what I'm saying. You got a guy that's uh, not working at the plant that, and uh, trying to be a high-value guy, trying to set up investments, trying to set up multiple streams of income. He might have a 9 to 5, but then he might be trying to, you know, sell insurance, real estate, or whatever. He's trying to get a hustle on the side and then buy some property and manage. I mean, he might be trying to do a bunch of different things to try to set you guys up for um, retirement. You know what I mean? So don't think, oh, man, I ain't got a good man. I, I don't got a good husband because he ain't doing all this stuff on this list. No, not not, not necessarily so. Not necessarily so. Uh, work hard, but also remember that your family can do with less of almost every, anything if it means having more of you. No. What difference does it make if your family, you sitting around your family starving while they starving to death? <laughs> Yeah, what difference does it make if you if you if you stand around your 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 family? They got more of you and uh, you know less food, and the lights are off, and uh, you know uh, you catching you getting on the bus with them instead of having your own transportation. What what does it what does it matter? <laughs> Number three, bad advice, bad advice. The only thing I say is if you can do all of that stuff if. You have your, um, you know, like Kevin Sam said, if you got your $2.1, $2.4 million put to the side, yeah, then you got time to screw around. You got time to sit around watching TV and all that. If you got that money put away, yeah, no problem. But if you don't have that money put away, how are you got how you got time to sit with your family and not be trying to, you know, yeah, you should spend some time with your family I mean, without trying to work and all that. Yeah, I'm talking about, but it should be only the time that you can spare. And you can barely spare any time if you don't have that $2.4 million put to the side. How are you going to survive from age 62 to age 82? How are you going to do that? You this is That's approximately what you're going to need, and I think that's an accurate approximation of the amount of money you may, you're going to need to live comfortably from age 62 to age 82, God willing, we live that long, right? But you also need other income coming in because what if you live longer than 82? What if you live to 92? What if you're blessed to live to 92? Huh? See, we don't think about this stuff because we out here too busy running around after these girls. But you got to think about this stuff. If you have a wife, do you really care about her? Are you setting her up for her retirement in case you're not here? If you got life insurance? Oh, man. Brother Clarence, you asked too many questions. I know. I know. I know. Number three, your time. You got to be up front and tell these women what you're going to do, what your plan is, and let them decide if they're going to, if they want to hang around with you with that plan therefore don't see but the problem is most of y'all are so scared of these women you like will smith you're so scared the woman gonna leave you you willing to put up with all of her foolishness man and any kind of stuff no you need to tell these women up front tell them or maybe you didn't think about it that way when you got educated about it and now you're going to tell her hey i realize now i don't have enough money for us to retire right now I need to get busy on that. 
She said, but we need you right here. I need you sitting up under me by the fireplace. I can't sit by you by the fireplace. Because if I do that, <laughs> what's going to happen when we retire? Or if we retire, we get to a retirement age, and we don't have the money we need. Then what? Then what? You're going to look kind of crazy at 62 or 63 years old, driving for Uber, uh, driving for DoorDash, working at Walmart, uh, you know, uh, clipping coupon. I mean, you're going to look, you got, that's a lot of work. That's a lot of work at 62. That's a lot of work. I say get your stuff together on the front end. All right, let's go. Number four, last one. Continuous pursuit. What does that mean? Okay, let's, uh, they're going to tell us. Uh, for most of us, we gave our wives the best we had in the very beginning. But just like a cable TV company that offers their best package, pricing and service at the beginning changes after the promotional period expires. Many of us have stopped giving our wives the best of ourselves. Holy smokes. Uh, we allowed romance to fade. Our wives need and deserve our continued adoration, thoughtfulness, and love. Uh, huh. Well, I tell you what, they definitely deserve our, um, our thoughtfulness and love adoration. No, I don't, I don't think, uh, no, 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 no. I mean, I adore adoration is no, no, I disagree with that. That's, that's not, you shouldn't adore your wife. You should love her. You should, you should have thoughtfulness, but when you adore someone, you are putting them on a higher level than yourself. And I don't agree with that. Just like, I wouldn't tell a woman to put another a one man on top above herself. You know what I mean? She should do play her position. You play your position. If everybody plays their position, you eventually mold into one person, right? You eventually grow into one person where you guys both know exactly what the other person do. But if you adore a woman, that's where the problems happen. Look at Will Smith. Will Smith adores his wife. How about Kanye West? He adores his wife. How about Scottie Pippen? He adored his wife. How about how about um, Dale Curry? He adored his wife. Yikes. Yikes. Okay. Give her your best very give her your very best each and every day. I agree agreed with that. Agreed with that. Okay. Give some background on this guy here. Dave Willis is the husband, dad, pastor. Ah, uh, there we go. An author of several relationship books, including The Seven Laws of Love, Central Principles for Building Strong Relationship. His wife, Ashley, is a co-founder of StrongerMarriages.com. Nothing wrong with that. The Facebook marriage page and the marriage app on iTunes. Find more of his resources on his website. This article originally appeared on your Tango. All right, so that was uh, the four, what was that, what was it? Four things every wife deserves from the husband. That's from Miss Ashley's point of view. Thank you, Miss Ashley. I disagree with you on a few things, but overall, pretty good list. What do y'all think? Miss Ashley right? Am I right? I'm so a little bit right. She's a little bit right. What do y'all think? What do you think is the best way to go for, um, you know, uh, some of these things? Are some of these things true? Some of they not true? Next thing we're going to talk about is, uh, um, I don't know, is it, is it uh, 25 best pieces of marriage advice. We're going we're gonna to go with that next. All right, y'all, until next time, uh, never be the aggressive brother. Peace.